Hello, everybody. Welcome to another editing tutorial with David James Visuals. Uh, if you're just tuning in, go ahead and check out my website, davidjamesvisuals.com, or my blog, blog.davidjamesvisuals.com. And I have a lot of cool photos and tutorials on my website that you can check out, any other ones uh, that are just very helpful and informative and very fun and blah, blah, blah. So here's another photo um, that I really like. I just took it about a couple days ago. A really fun couple, kind of hipster-ish, ish, and um, the big thing right now is people love to imitate film uh, with digital cameras, digital SLRs, or just digit, you know, anything in general. Uh, and I do love the look. I the one thing I, I I can't get enough of with most medium format film, depending on what they're shooting on, is the greens. The greens look really crazy. Uh, I love what they look like, uh, and it's really hard to imitate that with with digital SLRs nowadays and the sensor size has a big, you know, big thing, good play in it. But, uh, the main thing is the film just looks crazy good. So we're going to kind of try to imitate that. So let's get some setup for this photo. This was shot 5d Mark three and my 51.2 shot at one, two really wide open. Uh, I wanted to get that shallow depth of field kind of to try to imitate again, medium format as much as possible. Uh, shot it at ISO 200 and 640 of a second. So let's go ahead and reset this. All right, let's start. So it looks kind of bland. Uh, it doesn't look as good as I thought it did in my camera, but does it ever? <laughs> you get home and load the RAWs and they always kind of disappoint you, but that that's the joy of editing is kind of discovering how to make them look good. So I'm gonna start with this white balance. I'm gonna kind of tone it down just a little bit. That's probably good for now. I'm gonna tone the tint down. Uh, that's probably, I'll bring it down just a little bit more, make it a little bit more precise. Kind of hard to tell until we start boosting the exposure and whatnot. Exposure, I'm going to shoot it up. 120 looks pretty good right now. Contrast, I will not touch. Uh, shadows, I'm going to kind of leave highlights where they're at for now at zero. Shadows, I'm going to bring down to about 40-ish. Yeah, that looks pretty good for now. Blacks, I'll bring in just a little bit. And that should be fine. I'm not going to touch clarity, vibrance, or saturation. I'm really going to try to do a lot of my color adjustments and, and whatnot down here in this section. So let's go to uh, HSL and let's go ahead and go to the hues. And for greens, this is my big one. Let's go ahead and start sliding this bad boy up. And already I'm liking that so much more already. <laughs> that makes a big difference. You can see with it off. Uh, it's a great way to change the temperature of the photo without affecting um, skin. Because uh, normally, if I if I wanted to do something like this back in the day, I would have grabbed this and thrown it down a lot. Uh, and you can, again, get desired looks. But if you want to change a specific color, that's kind of the way to do it uh, with hue. And I'm learning that a lot. Of course, if you push hue too much, especially on greens, you're going to start to get some a little bit odd colors. You can kind of tell... So I would say be very gentle with your with your hue adjustments and saturation and luminance on colors. So that's pretty good right now. We're going to leave that. We're going to hop over to luminance. And of course, luminance is just adjusting the brightness of that specific color. Uh, you can do some cool looks with this. Um, I might even throw it up just a smidge, the greens, just to kind of blow out the back, blow out the background a little bit more. That looks pretty good to me. Because they're hipsters and uh, and this photo is trying to imitate film, we're going to add some grain. Not a whole lot. Maybe about 30, 40-ish. Uh, that's good enough. We'll stick it at that. We'll go up here to sharpening. Cool tool is if you hold down option on your computer, grab the masking, start sliding this, it starts to change where it sharpens. Instead of sharpening everything where it's everything's white, uh, it's gonna start to go more into detail of what it's only going to sharpen. So parts on their face, not the whole background and whatnot. It's really cool. So I'm gonna leave it about there. And his shirt looks quite trippy. <laughs> looks like a disco globe. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the sharpening and throw it up. That's probably good enough. I'm gonna go back down to grain and make sure I didn't overdo it a little bit. Kind of seems a little bit too much. That's good enough. We're going to leave that. 
So you can see already we've got a really fun image. If we look at it before, you can see it's pretty dull and boring. Um, but with just a few adjustments, it looks already really good. Uh, again, the lighting that you stick your couple in is going to dictate how the photo looks a lot. Uh, I stuck them in kind of a spot where there's a little bit of sun hitting them on their sides. Uh, and of course you can see the sun kind of streaking off in the background through the trees. This was kind of shot right, right around the sunset. I love this look. Um, if you don't have a lot of harsh sunlight, you can still make it look good, of course, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but that's the fun of going out and shooting. You kind of have to test, uh, test the grounds. And I recommend if you're not out practicing on friends and family and, and doing test shoots and, and practicing your trait, you will really never get better. Uh, you don't want to be practicing on clients all the time. I do a lot uh, and I just don't tell them sometimes, but I would highly recommend <laughs> that you practice on friends and family and maybe gigs that are not paid. Uh, so if we want to go a little s step further, we can go down to co tone curves. And if it's not clicked already, go ahead and click this little bad boy. And then we can start kind of making points on this tone curve. If you saw my Vosco video, you kind of know what I'm doing already. We're pulling up these blacks. Uh, and this will kind of give it even more of a filmy look. And just right there, lifting that up just that much, you can see what it did to the blacks. Kind of adds a little bit of haze, kind of kills them a little. It makes it look a little film ask, and and it looks good. I like it. I like both ways. Honestly, I would probably deliver this one like this just because I like it. But you can do some crazy things with this. Um, not that crazy. Woohoo! I'm gonna remove that point. Uh, if we pull it up even more, you can see it's starting to just go real flat and and uh, film ask. I would say, but uh, I prefer this. I think it looks good. All right, people, that was it. Tried to keep it short. Don't know if it was short, but who knows? One thing to be looking out for, I'm going to be doing in the field shooting videos. How do, how do I pose my couples? How do I get this lighting? How do I see it before I shoot it? Uh, all stuff that everybody really should should be practicing and learning and, and uh, all good things, all good things. So stay tuned, subscribe, share it. Go to the blog, blog.davidjamesvisuals.com. Go to the website, davidjamesvisuals.com. I am going to include this preset on my website. So go there, download it, share it, and uh, go to the Facebook. And have a great day, and I'll see you next time.